All right, so now we're going to shift to to uh, net play, and we'll start with where you're the um, you're the net man, your partner's serving. Now you guys have um, a technique called the Brian Bros pinch. Exactly. That I don't think a lot of recreational players are familiar with, and it's an amazing technique because it completely frees up the net man to do whatever he wants, regardless yeah. of what the what the partner is doing. It's a it's just a freelance play. Um, you're not completely selling out and going all the way to your to your partner's side. You're pinching it. You know, you're you're making the court look small. Uh, you're enticing them to hit it down your line. Uh -huh. Then you take it away. So it's not a poach. It's no, a pinch. It's a pinch. You know, you can come come here. You know, make the court look small. Um, sometimes you're trying to bait him to go down your line, and then you go boom, and you're you're there with the easy forehand volley. Okay. So um, it's it's just moving. I mean, if the ball goes down the middle, you, you're because you've pinched over, then the, it, it's pretty easy to take it away. Yeah, this is a play we use almost every time. We don't do a lot of full switches. We don't run a ton of plays. Uh, we just like to, to pinch, um, be instinctual, and just make the court look really tiny uh, to hopefully take their eye off the ball. We're, we're always doing this play. You should, you should always do it. You know, and a full switch uh, is, is good too, but I mean, this, this, is the, this is the move right to the middle of the court where it's, it's got to be a perfect return to, uh, yeah. to make uh, you know, Bob hit up on the surf. Yeah, and if you have a partner who, you know, passive Pete, stays back, doesn't, isn't playing ball, then the pinch is just you doing your thing and it doesn't matter what your partner is doing, so you've removed him from yeah. the equation. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be ultra aggressive if you're playing with a, a guy that's weaker than you. Uh, go out and try to end the point as quick as possible. And the pinch, way, the pinch play is a good way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you're telling him to make as many first serves as possible. Hopefully serve it down the tee so you're not exposed. Serve it into the body or serve the tee. Hopefully you can do that. And, yeah. and then um, you're, you're just roaming. You're, you're, uh, you're looking for the ball before so, it gets to your, uh, your partner. So Mike, walk us through the, the actual technique of doing this. Where do you start? Yeah, you start um, you know, in, in the sweet spot. And uh, you're just making a good move to the middle. And this is just, you're, you're just kind of pinching the middle, basically. Mm -hmm. You, you see how he started. He started back a little bit, and then his weight was going forward. Yeah. He's moving, you know, right here, right here. But he's not, he's not going, he's not just standing here in the sweet spot and going sideways. Yeah. He's, move, he's moving forward, you know, cutting down the angles of the court in, di in diagonal moves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's demo that. Um, Bob will pretend you're passive Pete, just serve and hang yeah. out. And uh, Mike's gonna pinch, and uh, Lee just go cross court on the return. Uh, there we go again. Yep. So it's it's not a full it's not a full poach. I just made a good pinch to the middle, and uh, and ended the point. You know you don't have to sell out. Um, you know you don't have to do a ton of communication with your partner. You just take it upon yourself to make a good pinch and, uh, and hopefully in the point there. And if I was standing here like most recreational players, that ball is back at Bob. It would have gone, it would have gone cross court. He's making the returner uncomfortable. Um, he's making the court tiny. That's what we say to each other a lot of times instead of calling a play. I just say, let's just make it feel uncomfortable. Let's make him not feel good. Make, make the court tiny. Okay. So and if you're the net man, there. your job is to make the court yeah. tiny. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Um, and your serves were kind of going T here. How does your move, I mean, let's, let's say your partner can't really control where the serve goes. Maybe it goes T, maybe it goes mm -hmm. wide. What are you then, how are you moving? How does that affect your move? Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, a bad server is going to miss his spot. I'm hoping he can go T because that just brings me into the play a little bit more. Um, but I'm keeping my eyes way out in front. I'm, um, I'm reacting. If I see him set up with the forehand, I'll pinch this. I'll, I'll still close, which makes, it, makes the, the lanes tiny. Yeah. Uh, but I'll still I'll pinch this way instead, if he if he misses a spot and goes out to the forehand. Okay. See which way his weight shifts. I mean, if he, you can see which way he's leaning, if he's stretching out for that forehand, Mike's definitely going to cover the. But, yeah. but but if you close tight enough, and he decides to go cross court, I've still made it look really small for him the lanes, and I'm I'm here too. So so what's the what's the timing of it? I mean, we've talked a little bit. Is it it's again right as he's coming up with the. Yeah, with I mean, the once his shot's coming forward. He's committed. Yeah. You know, he's he's done. He's already made up his mind where he's going to go. It's very 
hard to <laughs> change direction once your, your racket's already moving forward. So what are the, the two cues you would look for when you're doing this? Is, is where, where's the him. serve? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking for, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to know where Bob's going to serve it. Let's but, say you don't, though. Let's say you okay, don't and so you're freelancing. When, when Bob's tossing the ball up, I'm, my weight's already going forward. I can tell by the returner if he's getting ready and he's split stepping. My weight should already be going forward. I got okay. momentum going into the net. And then right before he uh, hits the ball, right before he contacts the ball, then I'm pitching in a, in a direction. Okay. You know, but if, if you move forward, you got to have your momentum going forward as he's tossing and he's, you know, getting in the right position. Um, split static, split step. And, and would you recommend, let's say, uh, you're not really sure where the serve's going, ahead of time you would decide, well, if this goes out wide, if the serve goes wide, I'm going to cover the alley, and if it's middle, I'll go that way. You just already, have, you already know which way you're going to go. I'm coming for it. Oh, it's T. I'm here. Or, oh, it's wide. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over here now. You just pre-plan your move. Those that, are the basics. That, yeah. happens a lot. that happens a lot. That's, uh, that's 101 for, for a pinch. Yeah. Um, those are the basics. Like you said, if it goes wide, he's pinching that way. If it goes T, he's pinching this way. Got but, it. But when you're playing with a, you know, a weak guy and, and you know they're probably going to want to go at him, then you, you're probably pinching more toward the middle because they're going after your weak part. So most of my moves will be there. And I'll, I'll kind of bait the alley. It's a tough shot to hit over the high part of the net down my alley. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm more trying to end the point because I don't want this guy to hit it. Yeah, yeah, and you'll pick up on the tendencies. If they're directing yeah. all their fire at Bob, then you're going to start just moving all the time yeah. and force them to hit that winner. Yeah, M make them burn you. you know? yeah. uh, make them hit two or three balls down your line before you have to you know, start covering that side. And let's talk a little bit about, um, let's say it gets into a, a, a back and forth exchange here. Now, what are you, what do you do? You make that first pinch. Let's say the guy hits a good return and is now in an exchange. Yeah. Where do you move? You got to reset first, right? Yeah. If it gets back to, to my partner, I'm um, I'm trying to be in the middle of the court. And I'm back up. I got to be moving and shaking, backing up. But uh, yeah, it, it's my job to make him hit as, as few balls as possible and uh, trying to end the point as quick as possible. So I'll, I'll I'll sometimes I'll stay in the middle of the court and just say, you know what? Um, you're gonna have to pick a direction, and and I'll I'll pick a direction, and hopefully I guess right. Yeah. But uh, it, there's a lot of a, a risk involved. Just basically, I'm I'm gonna be shifting over to to cover this guy. If if he's staying back there, I mean, if you wanted to play it safe, you could stand here and kind of get in the guy's head, and then always pick. Yeah. Yeah. Always pick the alley, and then your guy's gonna cover it, and then maybe he sees it after two shots. The next time you just stand there, you don't move. Yeah. I mean, and then you um, spike it away. There's a lot of a lot of scenarios. Um, you know. When we play opponents, we know what their tendencies are. But uh, when you're playing with a weak guy, yeah, you, you stand there. If you're, if you're in the middle of the court, they're going to have to hit a, a shot over the high part of the net or just really lace it in the alley. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just be putting up as much smoke screen as possible okay. and uh, hoping they're taking it off the ball. Let's, um, so let's, let's do a couple of things. We've covered a lot of ground. Let's first demonstrate the pinch where, uh, Lee, take the return down the line um, very carefully to... <laughs> With the camera gear, and you're you're going to anticipate that and okay. pinch and pinch line, and we'll just see how you put the ball away. I Perfect. That's, that's great, I though. You're I was so close, and uh, I pinched that it became an easy baller. Yep, I was, that was a, a winner shank. Yeah. Not everyone can hit the severe angle yeah. like Mike <laughs> Bryan. Um, that seems really easy for him. But for me, I would probably go uh, middle or right through the so guy's feet. So you're just going to stick it there or right yeah. through Mark's okay. feet? That's more of a percentage play for, okay. for most players. And that's probably what I would have done. I was but a little flashy. I'm going to go with the bread and butter. Let's go, yeah, go yeah, for let's the go. bread and butter. <laughs> That's right. perfect. Yep. Just safe. Safe. Open court. Through the middle, right behind uh, the net man. You know, he, he couldn't touch that one. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was a little bit tougher, maybe he would have gone for a more safe play down at his feet, set it up for the next ball, but that was a play away shot. All right, so we got a situation uh, very often in rec doubles where it's one up, one back. Yeah. And what happens now with the net man? You've maybe pinched off of 
uh, the guy's return, but he hit a good return. Mm -hmm. So now it's just a, a cross court rally. This which, happens a lot at the rec level, but now it happens a lot at the pro level. With the advances in technology, guys are feeling more comfortable with their ground strokes. And this is a, a formation that you see a lot, a scenario where there's two guys at net on the diagonal and there's two guys hitting ground strokes from the baseline. So it's the net guy's um, job is to you know, be aggressive, try to poach. But if he can't, it's also a baseline area's job is to, if he gets a short one, to go at the, at the net guy and set up your partner for, for yeah. the put away. So I'm making a lot of pinch moves to the middle, trying to get it. Pinching, pinching the alley, pinching the middle. And, and we, do um, this, we do this drill every day um, just off of a feed. Our coach will okay. feed it to the, to the baseliner and you just play it out, two against two. Um, and I recommend rec players do this drill and pros. Feeding issues. See, I pulled him so wide um, that was, you saw Mike how he moved way to the left. Yeah. Um, he, he saw his movements shift over, the ball went over there, and I came more towards the center, and Mike went towards the alley just, and got the easy I ball. I took that ball right down the middle, yeah. right behind the net guy, yeah. and the points over. Split the uprights, yeah. but you're just, you're just moving with the ball um, yeah, and, read, and reading it. Reading the play. Yeah. yeah. If you go out wide, you, you got to follow the ball, track yourself, and then pinch, pinch to the alley. Okay. Let's see it again. Finito. And it was interesting. So, and just for the lefties, like you shifted over too yeah. to, to favor your shot. We were talking about it earlier yeah. with your with your backhand, but that's one of the reasons you guys play forehands down the middle. Yeah, I mean, Bob got a, a wide backhand there. We shifted over as a pair. If you, see, if you saw Bob hit that, he was almost outside the alley. So I knew that I had to fill up some space here. Yeah. So I got I got a pinch middle there. All right, here we go. Let's shoot again. I'll take a little off this time. And I missed it. But I don't know how he missed it, but he did. I think that's a good lesson, though. I mean, like, that one, uh, a lot of I times. Go middle. Well, you, well I, I think just at the rec level, a lot of times if you're just there, you, you know, Lee is an extremely good player, so he's able to keep the ball more cross court yeah. than your average recreational mm -hmm. player. So if you're just filling up that space, you're going to have opportunities to put those balls away. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the key. I mean, that's why we practice this drill. It's not for the baseliner. We, we have good ground so It's for the net movement to imagine where the ball is going to be, to stay active, get their you know, eye off the ball, and uh, in the point. Yeah, and I think everybody watching, if you're not comfortable moving like Mike, this is a perfect drill where it's sort of that safe environment to go practice following the ball and kind of seeing what your results are. Oh, maybe I moved too early. I got I to... Gotta, Hold back a little bit and time it a little bit better. But this is a drill like this is how you develop that aggressive net play. Yeah, we work on this drill every day. I mean, it's a it's a play we see, you know, 50 times during a match. Not now in the pro game. So that's why you know you got you got to work on it to get your movement um, oiled up. Let's talk about a variation uh, of it where you get you end up having the two baseline guys being on the same side. Hitting down the line. Hitting yeah. down the line, yeah. So we'll put like Mike over here. Yeah. Now, Bob, you're, you're the aggressive net yeah. guy. Yeah. And so what happens then? You see this a lot in eye formation when, you know, guys down in the middle of the court and um, the server serves and often the server shifts over to his best shot. So on an ad court situation, the server will shift over to cover his forehand. Yeah. So you'll get Mike hitting down the line to a guy's forehand. And okay. uh, in this situation, the net guy can even be more aggressive and even pinch more because uh, that guy's got to hit the hardest shot in the world to get it by me, okay. which is a, we call it the dipsy doodle. You can call it whatever you want, um, but it's a, <laughs> it's a top spin short angle in the alley, which is pretty much impossible when you're, when you're hitting the ball aggressively like Mike does. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's see how that works. Okay, uh, go eye formation. Go eye formation. You hit the serve to me. Do you want, do you want yeah, to? Yeah, why don't we see it where, how it works? We can see it with. Or, we can or, see. It. Or we can just feed it. You want to I'll feed just it? feed it in. Okay, I'll, just, I'll just feed it in. We'll just right. set up. We'll just construct yeah, this, set this it up. scenario. You're going to line. Yeah. Let's 
But put in a ton of practice. I mean, I, I, I thought that was really interesting where you literally were standing here and your move was, you, you still didn't get it because Lee hit a good shot, but you're right here. I was putting a ton of pressure on him and pretty much leaving him the only place on the court, which is alley or maybe a foot on the, this side of the alley, um, which is difficult and he, eventually he's going to break yeah. down. He got it the first time, second time yeah. it was out. Yeah, I mean, or he's going to have to hit a great top spin lob. If he does, then I'll just shift over here to four. Yeah, sure, you're not, you're not that yeah, exposed. Safety, you're yeah. only exposed by the guy hitting the winner, which is unlikely. The dipsy doodle. Good move. Yep. I mean, I took my option there was to to go kind of deep and slow or go for the drop shot. Yeah, I was uh, balls below the net, so I picked the drop. Sure, and it sure. worked out. He hit a good shot. I mean, yeah. and as a groundy guy, sometimes I'll even want to go middle. Um, I know that you know his four and strong, so uh, why not go through the middle to his backhand? And we do that against a lot of the clay court oh, guys. Oh, like that? There. Okay. Monster and then. And then, Bob then you're really making the ground stroke even tougher because he actually has to pull it across my volley across the middle to hit it. Court. Yeah, because he, he's going to tattoo yeah. his partner otherwise in the, yeah. uh, in the back so there. We'll do a couple of those. So you almost well, shot him off even more. Well, hit, instead of hitting inside out four ends in the, in the alley, I'll hit him uh, down the middle. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Yeah. Man. He's hitting his weakest shot across yep. the middle yep. of the court. You'll get shanks like that. So I'll let you hit one, and then we'll do it again. That was really middle, but <laughs> take it again. I hit it too well. Oh, yeah. Legs are a little stiff. Yep. Sometimes was... I'll even bait the neck out, hit it a shade to the middle, but almost to the neck guy where sometimes I'll want him just to reach out and hit a weak volley. Yeah. And if he doesn't get it, then he's moving all the way to the middle, the ground stroke guy. And the, we're in a great position there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of guys got, that really can't volley, you're, you're baiting them to stick out. Yeah, the yeah, I just got to so yeah. You're not hitting right at him, you're hitting it just the right length. So a middle, a middle shot there would be perfect. It's like the, the yarn with a cat trying to get a yeah. bat at it. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they're, they don't know the pinch play. Yeah. And they're not pinching the middle. Yeah, which most rec players yeah. won't be. Uh, Lee, let's have it where uh, he go. don't shift over to, cover, to hit a forehand. Let him go at your backhand. So, and you try to pull it back cross court like we were originally trying to demo. Yep, so that was the one right there where he is, yeah. he's really now really, up. He's really aggressive. When he sees that it goes to the weakest shot in the middle of the court, then that's when he can really go to the middle. So that's, that's the read. That's interesting in terms of your commentary. When it's on the forehand side, maybe Bob's a little bit more yeah, conservative I mean, with his move, but when you get it over to the backhand, then he really takes up a lot of space. Yeah, that's, that's when you uh, move to the middle of the court. And, um, you know, he, if he wants to go up the line, he's going to hit his partner in the back. Yeah, you know? exactly. So he's got to go. <laughs> he's pretty much, if Mike hits the right shot down the middle, he's almost, his partner's almost blocked off any angle cross court. So his only shot is to, to redirect the ball across me. I'm in the, court, in the middle of the court. He has to pull it past he's my. Gonna have to hit, he's going to have to hit it out here. Yeah. Not very much, not a lot yeah. of real estate over here. So you're using the partner, his partner almost as a chess piece against him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great play. Sneaky stuff.